Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The focus of this uh, lesson is on uh, historical development of translation studies uh, for the purpose to get students aware of the uh, different stages in the uh, development of modern theories through uh, history. We go back to translation in antiquity uh, and in, in uh, 500 after Christ. Uh, the first piece of translation was uh, Gilgamesh epic uh, dating back uh, to uh, about 3000 before Christ. Interpreters uh, at that time played uh, important role in establishing communication between uh, the empires of that time, such as uh, Persia and, and Greece. Uh, the earliest uh, translation of the Hebrew uh, Bible was uh, performed by 70 Hebrew scholars who adopted uh, the uh, thought for thought strategy, altering the Hebrew words and phrases. Uh, and preserve uh, the idea uh, into uh, Greek. Uh, uh, three uh, versions of the texts are inscribed in the Rosetta stone uh, that was uh, found in Egypt and dates back to 196 before Christ. The Roman Empire, this is a map of the Roman Empire and dating back to uh, 117 after Christ. All these uh, areas was governed by the Roman Empire uh, issuing a civilization and uh, uh, also translation uh, developed greatly and flourished. Uh, so uh, many people were interested in the act of uh, translating Cicero, who was a Roman statesman, uh, referred to uh, translator as interpreter, and uh, called for translating figures of thought and preserving general style and force of language rather than rendering word for word. Other people such as Horace, Terence, and St. Jerome, uh, the first one focused on the aesthetics of the uh, source text. Terence uh, opted for carrying across values betwe between uh, cultures. St. Jerome is still is still up to now famous for uh, for the term sense for sense that he coined. He also translated the Bible to Latin and named it Palgate. Now the uh, dark ages uh, arrived and the, uh, the Roman uh, Empire eclipsed. However, translation still flourishing and developing, uh, but with uh, other people and uh, witnessing uh, different civilization that uh, came with the Islamic age and Islamic state. So there was a uh, movement in translation during the Prophet Muhammad's life also during the ruling of uh, caliphs and m more importantly with the Umayyad uh, and uh, Abbasid dynasties. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him uh, wanted to spread Islam so uh, encouraged translators to communicate with non-Arabic speaking communities such as the Romans and others. Zayd ibn Tabit uh, performed this role and interpreted uh, uh, letters to and from 
Persia, Syria, and Rome. Salman uh, al farisi translated the meaning of Surat al-Fatiha for uh, Persian uh, Muslims. After that, uh, the Umayyad uh, caliphs governed all this area up to Spain and also uh, developed civilization where uh, translation also uh, uh, flourished. Omar ibn uh, bin Abdul Aziz encouraged translators the same Similarly, Prince Khalid ibn Yazid encouraged uh, uh, tr translators and encouraged translating books of medicine, chemistry, and mental subjects from Greek, Byzantine, Persian, and Egyptian books into Arabic. Later, uh, with the advent of uh, Abbasid uh, Caliphate, uh, this civilization was uh, reduced in, uh, on land, on the ground, uh, to this area in green. But the Abbasid were more powerful and uh, also translation witnessed uh, its peak uh, when Beit al-Hikmah, uh, which is the house of wisdom, was established, which is the greatest institute of translation where uh, scholars from India and, and Persia were hosted. Al-Kindi is one of the famous uh, graduates of this institute. He translated um, Aristotle and also uh, became one also of the, of the, of the scholars of the time. Uh, famous translators of Beit al-Hikmah uh, is uh, Abu Yahya ibn al-Batriq uh, who adopted literal uh, procedure uh, whereby each Greek word was translated by its uh, equivalent Arabic word. The most influential uh, translator was Hunayn ibn Ishaq al-Jawahiri who translated more than 106 books and uh, he was also the son of a family who were all uh, translators. Uh, other uh, translators were famous too. Uh, one of them is uh, Tabit ibn we would like to mention here that uh, uh, translators and scholars who uh, uh, contributed to uh, this civilization were not necessarily uh, Arabs or Muslims. Uh, Ibn al-Batriq uh, was, uh, was uh, a patriarch of Alexandria and a Syrian scholar also, Jawahiri was the son of a Christian, and he himself uh, remained a Christian all his, all his life. Now we go to uh, Spain, where the school of Toledo uh, that hosts translators and scholars from uh, all over, uh, from different uh, regions, who uh, gathered there to study the Arab manuscripts that were translated in Baghdad. And uh, these manuscripts were again translated into uh, Latin uh, so as to give uh, strength to the European University and, uh, and, and, and give uh, also strength to uh, European uh, civilization. Uh, we note also that uh, because of uh, development of translation, uh, many families uh, were interested and uh, were professionals of, of, of translation, such as Samuel Ibn Tibun, who uh, 
was Jewish philosopher, belongs to a family of translators, and uh, translated uh, Jewish literature from Arabic to uh, Hebrew. Uh, from the 13th century to the end of 15th uh, century, translation uh, witnessed improvement in quality and quantity, which uh, enriched the Western world. Uh, many figures uh, also contribute to the development of translation. Uh, one of them is Al Jahid, who produced complete theory of translation in his uh, Kitab Al Hayawan. He uh, mentioned the role of uh, the translator and translator's knowledge in the subject to be uh, translated. Also, uh, he uh, advised the translators to be eloquent in both uh, languages involved in translation. Uh, he also uh, advised the translators to be cautious uh, while uh, translating religious texts. Now we go back to Europe in the uh, 17th and 18th century to meet Martin Luther who translated uh, who translated the Bible into German uh, common uh, language and he produced the systematic procedures of uh, translation such as changing the word order, uh, adding auxiliaries uh, or connectives and uh, retrenchment of Greek or Hebrew terms uh, for uh, not finding equivalents uh, in German. Uh, also, uh, maybe uh, expanding, the, expanding the translation uh, of single words and simplifying metaphors. Uh, Etienne Dolet was a French humanist and also he talked about, he referred to the knowledge, the importance of the knowledge of the, of the translator. Uh, he also uh, advised against word-for-word uh, -word translation and uh, opted for uh, uh, preserving the uh, overall effect uh, of the uh, original uh, text. John Dryden uh, was and still is famous for, the three, for his three procedures, metaphrase, paraphrase, and imitation, which equals uh, adaptation. We go now to meet uh, the uh, scholars of uh, Romanticism, the age of Romanticism, uh, August Schlegel, Van Gogh, Woodhouse, Lee, all these people uh, fought for uh, preserving the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the foreign culture uh, residing in the uh, source texts. Uh, Friedrich uh, Schleier, Schleier, uh, Schleiermacher uh, makes difference between the interpreter who uh, translates commercial texts and the translator who works on artistic texts. He also uh, calls for moving the reader towards the writer rather than moving the writer towards the reader. These uh, terms or procedures uh, will be uh, referred to in uh, Lawrence Vinotti's works uh, with the, uh, other terms such as foreignization and domestication. Uh, to conclude about the 19th century, the argument in, in, in this century was that the whole text had to be translated without retrenchment. For this reason, translators used foreign words 
in their uh, rendering. To conclude uh, this lesson, uh, we can say that translating Holy Scripts, uh, such as the Bible and the Quran, contributed to the development uh, of translation. And translation as a practice was treated as a phenomenon. The approaches uh, to translation were uh, philosophically based and based on uh, personal experiences of the translators themselves. The debate over word for word and sense for sense uh, uh, is always recurring uh, through, uh, our, throughout the, the themes and throughout the history of uh, translation up to now. Uh, Monday, uh, Jeremy uh, claims that translation became the site of a huge power struggle. We, at the end of this course and of this study, we can say that translation is a strong vehicle of knowledge, civilization, and power. Translation, in fact, pays off abundantly to whoever nurtures it to flourish. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention and see you uh, in the next uh, module concerning the 20th century translation theories.